Welcome everyone. It's Sunday. It's Cam Church, and we are coming to you from the past because it is Saturday night, and Space Freckle and I are recording this in advance because we are all incredibly busy. So I want to thank Space Freckle for hopping in to the church today and helping out. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, as soon as you said we're recording this, we were, and my brain said, we're recording this live. But I was like, wait, wait, no, we're not. No. <laughs> well, technically, me and you are recording this right now live. We are definitely living. We are uh, living beings. This, so that is partially true. And I can't think of a better host to help out with this than yourself. I'm just gonna put this right here. So um, we are live in front of a studio audience, which is Collar and Squirmer. And we oh, have all- Beans over here. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. <laughs> so the gang's all here, everyone. And say hi to everyone in the chat and get ready for a wonderful time. We have a couple of different things we're gonna do today. Uh, we're still going to do prayers. We're still going to do some announcements and all of that good stuff. So right now, we're just kicking off the summer. Uh, Unicult is going strong right now. Everyone is just kind of getting ready for the months ahead, taking care of their stuff, you know, working on ourselves, hanging out with our family and friends. Um, it's a really cool and chill and mellow time right now and I think it's just nice to be able to gather here on a Sunday and hang out with everyone. Um, not a whole bunch of announcements other than that. Of course it is $7 Sunday and so if you are wanting to go ahead and donate to Unicult, if you're wanting to donate for just general reasons or if you're wanting to donate uh, for our eventual church, you can do so. Uh, $7 is a great place to start with that. You can do that at Venmo at Unicol Unicron. Uh, if you're donating for the church or for Uni Anchors, just say so. Uh, you can also do a super chat. We won't see it today though. So keep that in mind. If you do a super chat and include a message, everyone in the chat will get to enjoy it. Space Freckle and I, barring some sort of cosmic ability, will not be able to view it. Uh, and of course, if you are wanting to speak with a Unicult member, you can do so by calling our hotline. Our hotline is available. Most times of the day, we have a wonderful volunteer crew. There's about three or four of us working on that right now. And so if you want to find joy, just like it says here in the photo, you can call 1-833-UNICULT. Cult members are standing by. Um, it's these two aliens with the flip phone. They will answer your call. They're very helpful. They're very kind and benevolent and the hotline is available for you and if talking is not your thing and I understand that you can always do a phone uh, you can leave us a text message and we will get back to you that way as well so if you have problems with your membership if you have questions about how to join if you have questions about the you know the spiritual practices if you just want to talk to a cult member because that sounds very intriguing you can do that, and the hotline's available, and my heart goes out to those who are helping with that. And Space Freckle, would you like to talk about all of these wonderful places where people can donate and interact? Yeah, sure. I also want to confirm that the 1833 Unicult aliens, um, they're just as big as they are in the picture. They, they like, have to jump on the... Um, flip phone in order to dial anything <laughs> um but yeah go ahead and check us out on all of our social media we're on twitter at unicult the number four joy and tiktok unicult the number four joy um on etsy at unicult supply co if you haven't gotten a unicult application if you are not a member you can join through our etsy and you can also get super cool cult stuff um aaron's wearing a super cool cult robe if you ever wanted a super cool coat robe go ahead and get you one at 
Unicolt Supply Co. Um, and then we're also on Venmo at Unicol Unicron if you would like to donate anything. Again, it's also $7 Sunday. Um, and then, of course, the website, joinunicult.com. Um, that's also where you can get more information on how to join and keep up to date with all the stuff that we're doing here in our wonderful cult. But yeah, um, are we ready for prayers? Yeah, let me, I just got to find my way out from behind this. Yeah, yeah, you're in the void. Uh, let's see here, let me see. Uh, I'm here, there, let me just move this out of the way. Okay, great, great. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we did it. Um, yeah, and everyone, if you go to the website, there's a spot to fill out to sign up the newsletter. Um, I want to thank the members that contribute and Lexi who formats it and writes a lot of the information in there. Um, if you're a member and you're in the Discord, there is a members only newsletter. If you're not getting that, um, reach out to Lexi or just post in the general channel and we can help you out with that. And if you are not a member, but you still want to get all the news, you can go to joinunicult.com and there's a place to put in your, e your email for further brainwashing. So you will not only get brainwashed, but you will get a newsletter, which is, they're, they're both great. Those are both great things. So I think we are ready for some prayers. Uh, we asked um, our membership to leave us some prayers in the Discord server. And uh, Space Freckle, do you have those handy? Yep, I sure do. That's the power of two screens. Hey. Um, but yeah, um, we have quite a few prayers coming in through our prayer channel over on our Discord. So these are all prayers from members of Unicorn. Your audio is up. Today. Oh, you're already good? far away. It's because I that's the also the power of two screens. Um, so I'm gonna kind of lean in over here, like a like ASMR. Um, so for the prayers, we have Lexi who's praying for a new perspective. Um, we have our very own Unicole Unicron who's praying for the uni baby and the uni baby's dad. We have Nate who's praying for safe travels. Ivy is praying for those who need physical and mental healing in any way. Bunny um, has prayers for Unicult, um, members near and far for the past, present, and future. Brian is praying for health, wealth, prosperity, and protection. And Oak the Unicorn, what a username, is praying for their mental health, abundance, and all the cult members and their friends and family. Um, Aaron, do you have any prayers? Um, I just want to pray for everyone that's watching this sermon right now, um, everyone who's engaged with Unicult, if you're doing it on social media, or if you're in the server, or if you've called the hotline, or if you've sent a piece of mail, um, just thank you for interacting with us. Um, Unicult is so many different things to so many different people, and it is it is beautiful, and it is powerful, but almost as important as all of those, um, Unicult is fluid, we're not static, and we change with the times and we change with where we're at and where our membership is at. And so if you have not joined and you're not sure if this is the place for you, it is because Unicult can be applied to wherever you're at and it can adjust to wherever you're going. Um, I have a prayer of thanks and gratitude for the community within Unicult. I have prayers for the support that um, has been given. Um, it's definitely a community that can help through just really anything that you're kind of going through and having people that are there to kind of lean on, which is really, really great, honestly. Um, prayers, of course, for happiness, prayers for abundance, and prayers just for general satisfaction with life. Um, and quality of life, especially as it is now, and us going above and beyond. Um, Spirit of Uni, we call you into this Zoom call today. Um, we call you into this YouTube channel today. We also call everyone to like our video and to subscribe and, and ring the bell. <laughs> Spirit of Uni, please call everybody to smash that subscribe button um, if you haven't done so already. And um, we call you to hear all the prayers that our amazing cult members have sent in, that people who are watching past, present, 
present and future um I have as well um and you feel free to leave those prayers in the um chat as well we may not be able to read them out loud but other people can also see them and the more people that those prayers have attention for then the more than that gets sent up to space heaven. And we ask that you see all these prayers, that you answer all these prayers and give us all the things that we are looking for. And if not that, then better. Um, you need bless. You need bless. That's fabulous. All it's right. Fabulous. And yeah, thank you everyone who's putting prayers in the channel today. I'm sure there are people in the the uh, YouTube chat who are leaving them and just everyone make sure to maybe say those out loud or read them like Space Freckle said, and it'll give those just as much power. So we uh, also, we ask people to leave questions for us. So we have a couple of things that we are gonna do here to um, with the rest of this sermon, uh, church service, words are hard. And so let me, I'm just, I'm trying to find the questions. <laughs> Okay, here they are. Okay. So yeah, we asked people to leave questions about whatever they felt like asking us. And so I think there are some that we both can answer. And then there's a few ones that I, I think you're gonna just be able to answer. I don't think I'm gonna be able to. Have you looked at these already? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so... Um, uh, Nate has a couple of questions. Hey, Nate. Nate's a wonderful uh, member from Australia, so hope you're doing great, and thank you for everything you do. And he asks, what reaction have your friends and or family members had to you being in Unicult? Oof. Um, let me see. I think I've had positive reactions because I only tell people that I care to tell um so only tell people that like I know that I'm in a safe space to be like hey by the way I'm in a cult um like all of my roommates are in are not are in unicult wouldn't that be fun but um all of my roommates um know that I'm in unicult and I talk about it all the time um and actually the other day um I don't even remember why we were talking about unicult I think it was because I had just came back from um, the last retreat that we just did and I had mentioned the vice documentary and my roommate sister was like there's a vice documentary and I was like yeah um, and she was like can we watch it and so um, we just pulled it up while we were all like painting and stuff we were we all had like canvases and rocks that we were painting we pulled it up and um, just watched the entire thing through and that was actually like probably the second time that I've seen the documentary. I don't like re-watching or rereading things. And so like, it was really insightful to have a new perspective on it. Um, or I guess the third time, cause I had edited the clips of it for the um, 10 year anniversary video. But this was like the second time fully watching it through for the sake of just watching it. Um, and it was really cool and by the end like one of my roommates was like contemplating joining or at the very least like watching um cam church consistently because when people see what unicult actually is they're like oh no this is really cool um but i totally get like the question because it's like being in a cult sounds scary and that's kind of the whole point is the deprogramming of it all yeah no, oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think it's it's really, um, I guess, uh, I mean, that's really positive. And I've, I've certainly have people that have been uh, really positive to me being in Unicult, like uh, people that I'm incredibly close with. Uh, my therapist this is very positive about me being in Unicult. And I try to, I, I do try to tell people that I feel like are going to like give it to me straight. So like, you know, I, I tell my therapist because like, hey, if you don't think this is a good, like I trust your judgment. Um, and you know, I mean, you, you want what's best for me. And I understand that, but the, you know, just kind of, um, touch on the phenomenon. Uh, if you tell, you know, a friend or a family member and they're not cool with it. Um, and I've certainly had that happen. 
Um, and I've certainly had people who reacted really negatively. And what I've learned from that is they, it, it, people tend to go right to the stereotypes about the word cult. You find that they're triggered by the word cult. And then they, they, they put those, um, those stereotypical, you know, movie tropes about cult members. They, they really put those on you. And I've had people put those on me that have known me for, you know, years. And it's very, it's, 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 it's a really um, painful thing to go through at first. And it's very confusing. And you just realize that, wow, like they're triggered by this word and it's, it's causing, you know, these thought associations that really don't have anything to do with me. And I think sometimes those negative reactions can be based on, in some level, they can possibly be based on wanting like what's best. Like I'm sure people have given me negative reactions, but they think that they're like warning me about something or they think if they're reacting in a way where, you know, I will um, think about it a little bit more. But, you know, it, it, it hurts to be stereotyped, especially by people that you think you know, but it can be very illuminating to how people see you and how people respond to what you're doing when it falls outside of what they believe that you do. So like, if someone has like a, a conception of me, then they, you know, they think they, you know, they, they kind of have built in their head the idea of like what I do and how I act and what I'm interested in. And then you join Unicult and you, you fall outside of that preconceived notion. That reaction can be very telling. And people, you know, have to be willing to like have an open mind or at least step back until they're ready to have one. And so it 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 can be hard, but it it can certainly help understand where other people are at too. And so I definitely wanted to, you know, touch on that so we can like, you know, get both sides of the coin here. Uh, next question. Nate, Nate left some great ones. Do you think Unicult will thrive better slash different now that Uni Acres physically exists and how so? I think like there's this open void as to all the different ways that Unicult could go and like all the different directions that Unicult could go into. Um, I think having a physical location is huge because it's like here is a space where members could con convene is the word I'm looking for could convene um, and get together and organize. I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to Unicult is the organization aspect mm -hmm. and having people come together. I mean, that's like the whole point of Unicult is groups of people. That was literally the whole reason is that groups of people are very strong and very valuable and we can organize even better when we're in a physical location and so i think there's a huge potential for unicult to thrive with the physical um location if it operates in that manner right um i'm kind of i i, I of course have an answer to this but i i wanted to ask you because i know we were talking about when we were down there like what are the parts of the way Uni Acres is set up or the way that it operates that we could maybe take that and incorporate into the space where we're at? And was there anything that like stood out to you that you've been thinking about or? Um, so for me, and I, this is like really ambitious, but like, I wanna buy a house. Um, I was talking with a friend and you brought up the idea of like just micro communes. Cause very often communes are, out like essentially away from people you know like in the middle of nowhere and there's this notion in which um when communes are kind of set out like that it almost seems like you're running away from the problems and the population um which can be nice I'm not gonna lie like there's I want to run away from society too duh but um I know for me one of the biggest ways that I want to help people 
is I want to be around people that I'm helping. I want that space to be a when a commune is a place where people come to commune with each other. Um, and a micro commune is just like a small house, doesn't have to be a huge, like crazy amount of land, but enough land where you could start a garden in your backyard. And that's enough where you could start to feed people on your street and help to supplement groceries within your house and then utilize those groceries to supplement for other people as well. And to start small mutual aid networks where you're at. I think one big thing that people can take with them is you don't, of course, you don't need to go out and buy your own house. I just want to do it because, I mean, look at my room and all this stuff. I want to be able to have the freedom to do all of that all over my house and just make a really cool place for people to come over. But no matter where you live, you can always make your home warm and inviting to have people come over. And it may seem kind of tacky, like make your home seem inviting. But if your home is inviting for people to come over, that is a catalyst for organization. And through organization, you can help the community around you, but you need to have those people in the first place, as we talked about with Unique, with Unicult, um, it's people, it's people coming together. And so if you want to, make a little bit of uni acres where you're at it's how can I make a space where I can invite people to my home or how can I find spaces where there are people mm -hmm. um Facebook I know is like people are like Facebook ew but like Facebook is really good at meeting new people um it's how I got into like markets and all that stuff through Facebook um, and then meet up like the app is really good but really just finding places to organize um, yeah um, I think that's really true I'm sorry everyone I'm, I'm like wiping my nose it's like super itchy um, um, I yeah I think Unicult is going to thrive I don't think it's a question of if we're going to thrive or if we're not because we're always we're always going to thrive because everyone here wants wants us to thrive. So that's inevitable. It obviously is going to thrive different. And I think you touched on something really important there talking about micro communes because that's certainly something that I've been thinking about in the last little bit here. I just mysteriously go off camera for a second. Don't don't think anything of it. Um I mean that's certainly something that I've been thinking about too because there is this stereotype about communes. You like you get a you get a place in the country and everyone moves out there, and then you're kind of away from everything. And the Uni Acres property is beautiful. It is gorgeous. There's going to be so much mad things that are magical that are happening there and already are, you know. But Unicult has also always been about deconstructing the norms that are involved with cults. And I think one way that we can do that is, yes, there's this property that is uni acres, and I'm sure we're going to have retreats and classes and so many amazing things down there. But one way that we can continue to kind of like change the narrative is setting up places where our members are. And whether that's in the country, if we have members in the country, whether that's in the city, if we have, you know, members in the city and it's really empowering you know, a lot of our higher level members to, like you said, kind of make uni acres wherever you are and make space for Unicult where you're at. And I think just as right now, we're kind of a network of people who are very online and we've been online, you know, forever and we're going to be online until the end of time. I, I think we're just in this adjustment period where we're finding out exactly how do we subvert the cult narrative when it comes to in person, like, because we've never fit the narrative. And I think mean, Uni Acres is going to be amazing. I think there's going to be retreats and classes and get togethers. And I'm so excited to see what it keeps looking like, like just amazing, you know? But along with that, I just, I see this map of the country 
and kind of like how you'll have like a fast food restaurant, they'll show a map and then you'll see their logo all over it to show where they're at. I just picture it and I just picture these little Unicult logos popping up all over it to show where our members have set up communities or set up mini communes or set up like housing communities together. And I think that is really going to be a wonderful thing. And these things take time and they take organization, but Unicult has never been shy about taking our time to do things right. And I think we're going to keep doing that. So I, I think we're going to thrive. And I think we're going to thrive in ways that people may not have thought about six months ago. Uh, Nate has one more question, and I want to honor these. How do you think Unicult has changed since the Vice documentary? Um, go ahead. Hmm. Um, well, for me, I came like the Vice documentary is what got me to join Unicult. Um, so I kind I'm kind of coming in at like a, I don't have like a full answer to that because it's like I only know Unicult, um, from a perspective of after the Vice documentary. Um, I would say. In watching it, like especially like the last watch through that I did and like kind of thinking about where we are now, I would say Unicol has definitely grown and matured. And so has Unicult. Um and I think the perspective kind of came from like a um hmm, what's the word? Almost like there was a lot more of an innocent approach to Unicult um, on, the, on the time of like the Vice documentary. Um, and that's not saying like, and then everything got real jaded and messed up, but it's more like, I mean, 2020 happened since the Vice documentary. Um, and that was a huge turning point. If you haven't seen um, Unicol's, um addiction um, sort of shadow work journey that Z went on, um, it was a huge transformation for Zier and in turn a huge transformation for Unicult. There was a lot of things that were just learned. And there was actually, I remember there was either, it was either a live stream or a recording of Unicult being like, I was wrong. Um, and it's not like, oh, I was wrong about everything within Unicult, but it was more like there was a fundamental thing that I kind of placed this on and I think it should be revisited. And I don't fully even remember what that thing was um, because it had already been looked at and revised at that point and has at this point just been fully integrated, but it's still up on YouTube. So it's still available to like take a look at um, and really dive into what was the inner work that went into all of that to come to that realization because it was a lot. I mean, and there was just like a lot of reading. Um, if you've never read The Body Keeps the Score, um, highly recommend. And I would say read it in verse though, because it's a heavy read, but it's all about trauma and what that looks like on the body, what and how that reflects on your mind, um, how things like PTSD are not solely for like soldiers. It's everybody experiences trauma. Um, but in breaking down a lot of the trauma that Unicol had went through, that Unicult had went through, um, it caused a lot of huge breakthroughs in the sense that within Unicult, we can look at the world and go, yes, we want things to be okay, but it's very, very obvious and also very important to look into if you're ever in a position in which it doesn't feel like it's obvious a to look into a position of like why does that not look so obvious to you um but it's very obvious to know that there are clearly a lot of things that are wrong within the world we may want the world to be perfect but this is the world that we're living in right now what needs to be done in order to change that and acknowledging that it's not as easy as um, it was stated and kind of you see the optimism within the Vice documentary and like how we want to live in this world where we're all happy all the time. That's not easy. And if anything, 
being happy all the time, it like, the only thing my brain just says is no. Um, you have a wide range of emotions and honoring that wide range of emotions. I think that's one thing that we definitely changed with since the Vice documentary. Like that was still always a thing, but like now it was done in practice and it was done in a way that we have like month long video evidence of showing like, this is what a breakdown looks like. This is what I can do in order to help that while still honoring the fact that it's happening and allowing it to happen. Um, and we've definitely become a lot more sophisticated in that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would totally agree. And anyone that um, wants to go back and look at that um, um, SLA uh, a series is it's 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 incredibly um, uh, raw and authentic, and I think that that authenticity and the willingness to kind of Unicol's willingness to broadcast that authenticity and really dive in to what they were going through, I think that ha does have like a ripple effect um, to the rest of us, and it helps us be more authentic with each other and confront our are what we're, what we're going through because you know there's people in Unicult that go through all sorts of different types of behavior and I think we're really there for each other even if you know my stuff isn't the same as your stuff and vice versa um going to the original question how has it changed since the vice documentary oh we got a discord um we we we, we didn't have a discord when the vice uh doc originally occurred um, because I joined like right after the I, I mean I found out about it right after the um the, the vice doc aired. I think we have really worked hard in developing our conflict resolution skills. Um, it has not always been easy, and we certainly have had our fair share of missteps, but we've really refined how we are able to help members that are in conflict and recognize that and offer careful mediation for people. Along with that, there's been a lot of instances that have helped us refine how we have some kind of structure. A top-down power structure is never perfect. It's not designed to be that way. Um, but I think we've learned to work within it as best that we can because we have, um, I feel, and I, I can speak for myself, but I feel incredibly empowered to like look at Unicult in the way that you know works best for me or offer suggestions for where we can go. And I I think a lot of the other magicians would agree. I don't know, you know, but I feel like we're very empowered and trusted. And, and that goes from us down to the devoted members. And so I think we have at least within a structure that can be easily manipulated with the wrong people in place. Um, I think we have wonderful people in place so that we're working with this top-down power pyramid in a way where it doesn't necessarily feel like there's a top-down power pyramid. It just kind of feels like one group of people helping the next, helping the next, and coming together in the ways that we can. Um, I think that's another thing that's been really refined and we've really worked super hard on. Um, and I, I, I think... The, the things you touched on space freckle were really important because I think there was a time, especially around the Vice documentary and before that, where I think people could, and I've seen like comments, you know, in, in YouTube comments, you know, uh, where people would say, oh, you all are uh, spiritually bypassing. And I think there's a case to be made that, you know, sometimes uh, for, for, for a while, there was a bit of that. And sometimes, sometimes you may need to do that for a minute to get through something. I'm not saying rule it out um, completely as a tactic, but I think there has been a lot of like looping back and a focus on inner work. And I actually had a really good friend remind me today because I was going through some harder feelings and I'm like, oh, I don't like feeling this way. I just want to be joyful all the time. This is something I said. And they reminded me, hey, joy is any authentic emotion. So, and I'm like, oh, you're right. You're right. 
And I think that's such a powerful idea because I think we have found this balance and we're refining it all the time between bypassing doing any inner work and just being like, we I'm joyful all the time, but joy being like this state of like obliviousness and just like looking at the world, you know, through the technicolor glasses and the aesthetic and everything. But then the other side is like, we've done a lot of work learning how to embrace when we have these emotions and understand that they're a part of healing. And as long as they're authentic, they're beneficial. And where we stop ourselves from suffering so much that we can't get out of that, where the negative emotions become detrimental. And I think we've really worked hard to like find the middle ground and the, and the healing space between those two extremes. And I think that's been a huge change philosophically um, and fundamentally with like what we teach and what we practice and what we talk about. So, um, okay, this is one is like, just for you. Um, what is your best-selling magical item and what is your favorite thing to bake? Um, I have to, let's see. Um, I have these strawberry rose cakes um, that evoke love. And I think that's definitely my best-selling item. It's basically a French vanilla cake um, with rose water. Um, the frosting is cheesecake. It's not like a cream cheese frosting. It's actually cheesecake. Um, and then it has like a strawberry crunch on top and like a fresh strawberry. And that cake is definitely my best seller because it's like um, cheese and crackers. What does it do? Um, I've had people come up to my stand and go, I bought your cake and then my husband ate it and now we're fighting and like it's both really funny but also like what like am I breaking up marriages with this cake um which is like an interesting thing and so usually like people will buy multiples um and that makes everybody happier but I've also had like like a, a better story is that um somebody had bought like that cake more ran like a warm bath for themselves um ate that cake had like a ritual candle and like started crying because they realized this is the first time I had taken care of myself in a very long time and acknowledging that wow I really need to do a better job taking care of myself um so yeah the biggest compliment is this cake ironically breaks up marriages but not seriously everybody's fine um but also that it does have people realize that they need to take more care of themselves and then the second part of the question on uh, my favorite thing to bake I don't like have a thing where I'm like oh yeah time to bake this thing because I actually like how I said I don't like re-watching um re-watching movies and rereading books I, I actually don't like baking and cooking things multiple times um I'll do it because like I got a market um, that I got to cook for, but I like baking new things. Um, and like the picture that Aaron had put up, I had made this buff bear bread, I think about a week ago or something. And it was fun because it was new. And I felt like I was, I really felt like I was in a lab and I'm like following this recipe and it's like, okay, do this now, let it sit for this long and let it, and I felt like I was like, you know, I, I felt like I was in a lab. I felt like a witch because it was like now do this Ooh, what's next Ooh, what do I do and everything was really new and at the very end you get this this bread it's got a six-pack it's hilarious um and like I think that's one of the most fun parts in cooking if you're ever intimidated about cooking or baking or really anything try something that's new and really lean into the fun of it um it can be so stressful to cook for yourself but I think instead of being like I have to cook and I have to be like Gordon Ramsay just kind of go I'm making something that is helping me to sustain my life because food is a life force because we need it to live and lean into that lean into the fact that you are feeding yourself both physically and spiritually because you're having fun that's the biggest part with kitchen magic you don't need to you don't need to purposefully do magic with kitchen magic or really anything 
as long as you're in, you're always interacting with the energies around you. And as long as you're interacting with it in a way that is positive, you're doing positive magic. You're always doing magic, but like you want to do magic that fully impacts people in a good way. Interact with those energies positively. Think about instead of, like I said, instead of worrying about being the best chef in the world and it needs to taste exactly like this, think about I'm making something that is going to nourish my body. And that is enough. Mm. And you will have some really powerful stuff. Amazing. I'm sorry, you were telling some emotional stories of compliments, and I put Buff Bear Bread up on the screen next to I you. saw it. I thought it was funny, though. <laughs> I just, I, I, I love Buff Bear so much. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We only have, like, two more questions. Um, Tiki Puppy asks, what's your favorite theory related to spirituality? Ah, uh, jeez. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Favorite theory, uh, I think I, I had talked about this last camp church, but it's literally that you can do whatever you want, really, um, when it comes to spirituality. We get really caught up in these rules. I saw somebody um, on like a Facebook group, it was like a cottage core Facebook group, and they had um drawn out they called it like their magic book or their magic journal it was essentially a book of shadows or a grimoire where if, if you're not familiar with the terms it's basically when you a journal where you put all of like your spells and like things that you've learned about herbs and it's, it's like a just a compilation of all of your magic work that you've done so far and they had started one they had done all of these herb pictures of these things that they're doing and it's very aesthetic and they're like hey, hey guys look at this and people in the comments were like, you should never post your book of shadows on social media. You should never do this. It's dangerous. People are going to come and take your energy and do all of these things. And there's all of these rules that they're implanting on this stuff. And it's just like, I mean, sure, if you believe that. It's the same with any other religion, how you can't shove somebody's religion down somebody else's throat. Like, I can't. Like, I would hate if somebody sat there and tried to shove, like, Catholicism down my throat, which they did. <laughs> I was I was born Catholic. Um, so, like, I wouldn't want that. And I think it's easier to see it with religion because it's, like, these separate models. But especially as a lot of us within, like, the millennial and Gen Z generation are becoming spiritual, which is, like, way more broad we don't have the confines of religion to go well you're telling me that I should be this instead we're going within spirituality you should never do that and it's like well I don't believe that and so my that's why my favorite thing is you can do whatever you want um obviously following the main rules of just harm none and acknowledging that we're all one I think that bleeds into everything literally everything um but other than that whatever you believe to be your truth is your truth and that's okay and we don't need to fight each other over whether or not you should take pictures of your own spell book and post it on social media uh yeah um I don't you said Book of Shadows, and I thought of Blur Witch 2 Book of Shadows, so um, I felt like a big dork. Um, I don't know really what constitutes a theory about spirituality, but um, I'm comforted by the idea that um, eventually I'll, I'll move on to rejoin the universe and be able to uh, enjoy the enormity of it and the collectiveness of it in a way that I can't right now because I'm limited by flesh and bones. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm very comforted by that idea. And, you know, um, Unicult doesn't have anything about, like, afterlife. We don't, you know, we don't have, there's not a chapter on that in Fundamentals. And so I kind of, you know, have to go with what my gut feeling is and what feels good to me. So it's it's just my own theory, but um, that gives me a lot of comfort um, as we uh, go forward. And so I, I like that. 
Um, so the last, okay. So this last one is about baking. So, ow, collar. Um, he bit my shoulder. <laughs> He's clearly upset. Um, hi, hello, hello. Are you wanting to? Hey, viewers. I know everyone loves to see a baby boy, a baby man. Um, so Brian asks, what are some uncommon spices and or magic spices that you can add to cookies, bread, or whatever we are baking? Um, honestly, like it kind of ties into what I was saying before in the sense that you can do whatever you want. Um, and I talked about this a little bit in my last camp church, like my most uncommon thing that I've added to stuff is pop tarts. Um, and it's like, it ties that in with chaos magic in the sense that like, you would never expect a pop tart to be on someone's altar, but here it is existing purely out of spite. And that in itself can be one of the most powerful things that you can do to continue to exist, even when everybody or every bone in your own body is telling you not to. And it's like, yeah, here you are. That is some really powerful stuff. I would say some other words, um, but we're trying to all hail to the almighty algae rhythms. <laughs> um, so I, I will not say that you are a bad asparagus by um, believing that. That's my my um six year old censorship right there. Um so um but also like if you're looking for some I don't know, I think when I see when I think uncommon, I think of like not easily accessible, which I don't really like because I like for everything to be accessible. So I'll also I'll mostly stick to uncommon but still accessible. Um for example, um, one of my most recent things that I made is a Fruity Pebbles Tris Liches um, for inner child healing. And um, I mean, when you're working with milk, milk is within a lunar energy. So it's within the divine feminine or honestly, you know, gender is uh, it's a lot, um, but it's within your receiving. Um, a child receives milk um, from their parent um, as weather warms up and the animals start to come out mothers feed their child milk or parents feed their child milk and so when you look at that that is all about receiving and parenting and when you look at something like fruity pebbles a whole cereal it's kind of reminding you of what it was like as a child um getting up at saturday and watching Saturday morning cartoons and eating a bowl of cereal um, and just those feelings. So uncommon ingredients for cooking and baking and kitchen magic in general, it's more about what does that remind you of? What feeling does that give you? Like, just like how your grandparents cooking can be some of the most magical cooking that you've ever had because it's like, it's very rare because it's like you only have it when you go to your grandparents and there's just so many memories that are embedded within that um so uncommon spices and stuff don't need to be super crazy things that you can't find that aren't accessible that are expensive um and essentially just held on this pedestal for no reason it could be things that we don't normally market as magic. Um, and I'll leave it by saying, again, if you haven't seen like the last sermon I did, definitely, this, I, I'm just reiterating a lot of that, is that looking at one thing as being magical and then saying another thing is not magical, you're essentially splitting the universe in half. Um, and that's not how it works. Everything that exists within the universe is magical. Pop-Tarts are magical. It exists within the universe. It's here. It has that magic energy. It's here. If it has energy, it's magic. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so those are our questions. Thank you, everyone, for leaving those. And we have one last very exciting segment. Um, and I know we're having a little bit of a longer, you know, service today, but um, 
we're kind of breaking from format a little bit. So, um, Space Freckle, do you want to bring up the um, highly um, entertaining uh, Wheel of Sermons? Yeah. Um, and I think if we have the fact that we have a longer service, I think it's really cool because if anybody's anything like me, I like watching longer videos and doing stuff around the house. This and, is a great one to put on. So we have every topic and fundamentals set up here on this wheel, and uh, we're going to spin it, and then we're going to talk about it. Um, so <laughs> uh, here we go. That's my drum roll sound effects. Here we go. So everyone knows that we didn't plan this out. Oh, my. Okay, a light one. <laughs> okay, amazing. Um, cool. Heal evil. Oh, that doesn't uh, sound um, like it relates to anything in the world. Um, just a random topic. Um, so... We could just I sing. Could song. Jump in. Yeah, yeah uh, no. I guess I'll start. Is... Um, no, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, so this is like, this is one of those unicorn concepts that like, it is, I, 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 I think sometimes people, and I know even myself, can like, it sounds really, really like big, right? Because evil has this like, huge connotation like and I'm just gonna read like the first chapter here from the book just to kind of like get us in the the mindset here we have been taught a mentality of perpetual othering that has resulted in an extreme social reality of us versus them as you have understood we are all one so in any idea of us versus them is merely an illusion now, when we fight anyone or anything, we are really only fighting those aspects within ourselves. When we do our best to understand and accept these things, we transfer ourselves and we transform the world around us. So I see heal evil like you have to like disconnect yourself from your previous understanding of those words. So evil, we have to kind of broaden that out to not just like, you know, megalomaniacal, I'm going to shoot a missile. And, or we have to break heel out of, like, like, just the idea that, like, we're curing everything all at once. What I think this chapter is kind of asking of us is taking all these ideas, the idea of all one, the looking inside ourselves, a lot of this inner work that we're working on and creating space so others who may be, um, have not received that before or not learned that before. And thusly they're latching out and harming others because they have pain inside of them. And when we're when we talk about healing evil in this case, it's about like how do we take these unicult concepts and create space where others can integrate them and hopefully, you know, heal what's going on with them. And then those actions, those outward actions, those harmful actions will hopefully cease. Um, it's not as instantaneous as heal evil might say, and it is not like this huge like grand gesture, because I, I just think of like healing light washing all over and then everyone's good and holding hands. But it's really like, how are we using these concepts to boost everyone up and help people begin that healing journey? Because when you get on that healing journey and you come through it, that's where us versus them starts to disintegrate and we go to all one. So that, that's my thought about it. I mean, yeah, like um, I've been thinking about the sort of us versus them mentality a lot. Um, I watch the news like a lot. <laughs> um, like it's, I watch like, I usually watch this channel called like some more news um and I like it because it's like the news but in like a comedy 
like a comedy twist on it, which is really necessary. Sugar helps medicine go down type situation. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so easy to get into that. We're good. They're bad. Look at the bad people being bad. Um, and I'm not going to lie. It feels good. And it makes things really easy because when you think like that, you don't think about yourself. You're like, no, they're bad. We're good. And it's just really easy to sit in that. And it also makes it really easy to dehumanize those people. Um, one thing that I had learned watching the news um, was that a lot of people who are really rich, like having a lot of money changes your psychology. Like it can re and like and it can happen to anybody there was a study in which you had like a bunch of people who were playing monopoly and they had one player start off with a lot more money than the rest of the other players and it caused them to of course like do amazing at the game because they're starting with a head start um and they have like essentially this privilege starting off that other people don't have but what happens is this player they found that within the study, the player who started with a head start hardly ever like acknowledged that they started with a head start when they won. They're like, no, it was all me and my skill. I did that. And so it's really easy to look at these people who are like, oh, everybody else just needs to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. That's what I did. And it look, it worked out for me. And nobody acknowledges how much money that you had to start off with. Or like your parents were super wealthy. What are you talking about? Um, or the way that you present within society makes it a lot easier for you to maneuver within society when a lot of us, like it's next to impossible to do that. And it's, difficult because I don't like even even like there was a hesitation there because I don't want to be like it's not your fault you're and, and and I I don't because I'm like okay it's you have some sense of responsibility anyway um so it's not like you're just letting these people off the hook but it's like acknowledging that everybody's everybody has a thought process to get to where they're going no villain believes that they're the villain in their story. There is a logical reason, at least within their head, it makes sense. Maybe it's like, it doesn't make objective logical sense or whatever, but there is this logical reason as to why they are doing what they're doing, good or bad. And so part of healing evil is to acknowledge that and to acknowledge like, okay, there's a thought process that got you here. Right. What is that thought process? Here is my thought process that got me to where I'm at. Um, Cause a lot of times I've found that there's been a lot of times where people have had this sort of process in which like, we're thinking the same thing, but the methods to get there are completely different but we want the same thing. But if we continue like separating ourselves in the way that we've been separating ourselves, we're never gonna get there unless you just eradicate the other group. And that's, I mean, that's a lot. That's, that, uh, oh. I, I have no words for that, but yeah. I, I think this touches on something that's, that's really um, important with this idea because um, I think you can look at the idea of heal evil and you can think about what am I going to do when I go out into the world and confront other people who are harming others. And that's certainly one way to look at it, of course. Um, I think that, and I mean, this is certainly something I think about, that, you know, I, for better or worse, watch the news at times. And um, I think a lot about the harm being done in the world. And it is tough not to fall into us versus them. It's it's in, in Unicult, we don't think of Unicult in a phrase of like us being Unicult and them being everyone else. I think we do a really good job of not falling into that, but like in our own personal lives, um, it can still be hard not to fall into it, especially when like 
you can kind of look around and see where the pain's happening and you can kind of get an idea of like who's perpetuating it. But that's where you 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 don't have to go like hit the streets and figure out, okay, well, how am I going to stop this? Because sometimes just stopping it is just feeding into us versus them. Um, I think one thing that this chapter calls us to do is look inward, begin within. And I think you really touched on it is like, find where we can find sympathy and find where we can find empathy and try to human, human, humanize, humanize people just to our own POV and to our own internal state. Because if we're in a, you know, fight or flight, us versus them fear state, I don't think we're going to get out of it, like going out there into the world and just trying to apply things sometimes. you We have to break it down internally. And I spend a lot of time thinking about like, why does this person, why do me and this person disagree? Why do we see these things differently? Um, can I feel sympathy here? Can I feel, can I feel compassion here? And that's not to say that like, I'm going to go up to every single person and say, I have compassion for you. Cause sometimes those conversations, um, are not possible. Like you're talking about talking to, you know, we're talking about like the ultra wealthy. We're never going to really talk to any of those people. But what we can do is create an internal state where we're trying to understand. And then on a micro level, I think it is just slowly looking around your own circle and finding smaller ways that we can help. And that may be a family member where you have some sort of disagreement and maybe they're causing harm or maybe you're causing harm and you harmonize that and you hold empathy for that and you create space or with a friend or with a group of friends. And it just, it sometimes has to start on this micro level because Jeff Bezos ain't taking my call to redistribute his wealth. Like that call ain't getting picked up. But can I go around and I can look at the people that I know in my social circles or the people I see around and maybe do like micro changes to help to help myself break down those concepts and then help other people break down this us versus them. And I find like the most effective thing. I was talking to um, someone I'm very close to. And I was talking about this idea of going into, you know, these small towns where um, these small towns or other parts of the country where normally I might not feel comfortable. And I'll let our viewers, you know, figure that what I, what I mean by that. And she said to me, and I, and I said, like, you know, I think really the best thing I can do right now to break down division is just to go out there and be authentic and let kindness show through and just be myself and put a face and an energy into behind the general concept of, of me and, you know, people that get others. And she said, you know, Aaron, sometimes that is the most important form of activism. And I think that is kind of a way of saying heal evil. Um, because when we say evil, we're really just talking about breaking down this us versus them mentality. We're talking about helping people find out where to do the work and how to do the work. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna know where you need to do it, but I can talk to you about how I did it. And I can say, hey, here's some concepts, take it or leave it. And I can put a face and an energy into groups of people that other people may not have met and vice versa, you know? There's a lot of like different places I haven't been and different people I haven't met. And the really way that we break it down is on this micro level of not seeing each other through a TV screen and not seeing each other through YouTube. I mean, except this YouTube channel. This YouTube is great. It's super authentic and everyone here is real. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. But what I mean is not seeing ourselves and the others in the world through what a TV camera pointed in their face. 
and it's just seeing people through face to face as best that we can and that has to happen on smaller levels that sometimes we think about yeah no totally agree yeah yeah i think we we i think we nailed it <laughs> yeah. oh wait wait no wait because mine is going the other way no mine's going towards you I, i'm recording okay. the zoom so you have to use Am your I other i'm recording the zoom so you have to go to the other Am way I doing it so i go this way yes thank you okay yeah because i'm recording the zoom and i can see it okay we did it <laughs> um i i think that kind of covers this chapter really well um, do you have any final thoughts about that or? I really like um how we were able to tackle the broad topic of heal evil, but we have difficulty high fiving. You know, for Zoom. everyone has their own thing to work on, and it's just who you are and where you're at, and everyone's good at something else. There is going to be someone who is so good at high fiving, but they're not really sure how to heal evil yet. So. <laughs> It will do the work that feels, you know, everyone, we all got different, uh, we all got different rough spots to feel. <laughs> We're all hurting. But you can cure your hurting by joining Unicult. Go to www.joinunicult.com. Www That's one for I's and three for E's and O's for zeros and nines for N's for some reason. No, I'm kidding. It's all letters. Join Unicult.com. It's very late. Um, I have no AC, so I am sweating in this thing. Um, but space I'm super sleepy. A space freckle. I want to thank you for doing this. It is so much fun, and it has been a treat um, to have you um, helping out with the sermons and helping with Cam Church lately. Your setup is super cool. Your aesthetic is spot on. Um, and I really enjoyed and I appreciate your helping out with church today. I appreciated being here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So everyone, um, a Space Freckle, do you want to tell everyone where they can find more about you and your baking? Uh, Yeah, sure. So I have a website. It's um, Witch Pixels um, is my business. I do kitchen magic. Um, and I also do, like, I make little, these guys, stuff like jewelry and stuff as well. So feel free, stop on by my website. It's witchpixels.square.site. And I'll probably go into the comments um, retroactively and leave the link to the site in the comments. So um, you can click on it. Um, but yeah, that's me. I'm also in Unicult. Join Unicult. Join, 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 join. Let's be friends. Yay. Yay. And um, I don't bake anything and I don't have a store online. So um, if you want to support, you can go to a Unicult for Joy on the TikTok application for all sorts. Whoop, whoop. You, you can see all the amazing members and videos that we have up. It's Unicult, the number four, and the Joy, like the word J O Y. And subscribe there, share, please, with your friends. Help us get back up to a 1,000 subs on TikTok so we can go live and get banned again. I would like to just do this cycle for that's, eternity. Um, that's what all the best TikTok celebrities do anyway. Yeah, yeah. I would like to just be frustrated forever. Um, and um, so thank you all for joining us today. Let's say a quick prayer. Uh, do you want to Do you want to say the prayer and take us? Oh, wait, you did the prayer earlier, yeah, right? Sure. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay. Um, we're Hey, everyone, we're really tired. It's 1030 at night. It's 1130 for Space Freckle. And <laughs> the longest cam church in ages. Um, Spirit of Uni, thank you so much for gathering us here together. Uh, we both did prayer. Did we do it? I'm like, who? which one of us did prayer two hours ago? Um, I led prayer two hours ago. Okay. Spirit of Uni, we're really glad that we're here. We're really glad that everyone here is with us. Um, bless all the members of Unicult, past, present, and future. Bless all the, the uh, aliens and fairies and um, entities and beings and 
cool things and bugs and creepy crawlies and everything that's in the world and everything that's going to be in the world. And thank you to everyone for being here and uni by caller, uni bless. Uni bless. All right, everyone. We will, we will see you here next week.